our mom gets stressed out because the dogs don't listen. Let go. And neither do we. Hmm. Do not do that. Barbara thought it was important for Samson and Jordan to have a dog growing up. But Samson and Jordan can't walk the dogs right now because the dogs are as big as they are and a lot stronger. So it's Barbara's primary responsibility to take care of the dogs, and that presents a tremendous challenge for her because they don't really listen to her. If the dogs were better behaved, I think the stress level in this house would go way down. Berkeley, Berkeley. But it's easier said than done. Now you can see why. Berkeley, Berkeley, Berkeley. Berkeley didn't want to go back into that den, and it was clear she didn't want to listen to Barbara at all. In. Oh, I better get in. I better get in quickly. Da. Do you have a stronger relationship with one of the dogs over the other? I would say I have a little bit of a stronger relationship with Zeppelin over Berkeley. Berkeley, Berkeley. Berkeley. She's my stress every day. She's just a third child. She's as stubborn as can be. I mean, that's just her personality. She's just so strong-willed. Here's what I don't think you're giving them. Is there a lot of positive interaction with these dogs? I mean, I sit and hang out. I mean, I, oh, I, positive interaction as far as... I mean, is there any mental stimulation? Is there any training them? Is there any getting them to do things, to work? What do you mean by work? Have you stimulated their minds at all? Do you think, as an owner, that you stimulate your dog's mind? I, probably not. I mean, I... But no. I I want Berkeley to listen to you more. I want to teach her to focus on you when you ask. And I do this by putting the treat in front of the dog's nose and putting it up to my eyes. Watch me. When I get that focus, I give the, the dog a treat. Watch me. Good girl. And I don't want her focus to be on this hand. I want her focus to go from my hand to my eyes, even if it's just fleeting. Watch me. Good. Did you see that her eyes go from the treat to my eyes? If you take her, get a few treats. You just put it in front of her nose, put it up, and really watch her eyes, okay? No, I don't want her, I don't want her going, mm, edit. Berkeley was not confident in looking at Barbara. She didn't want to make a connection. And that's because Berkeley's not used to making a connection with Barbara. In fact, the only interaction that Berkeley has with Barbara is mostly being told off. So do focus for me. Good girl. Try going like that. Watch me. Good. Try being a bit more animated. See if she, she does it then. Berkeley. Put, put, it, put it up. Show that you've got it. Berkeley. Put it up to your eyes. Berkeley. Berkeley. Stand up so that you're not... Berkeley. Just wait, don't call her name, just wait for it. Wow. I, even I have to say, wow. It's clear to me doing this training with Berkeley and Barbara that there is a huge, huge chasm between the two, a massive disconnect. And I really need to repair that relationship if any of this training is gonna work. Berkeley's focus on Barbara is terrible. And the only way to get that focus better is to train not just in the home, but in other environments as well. I'd like you just to ask her for a simple SIT. The hand signal is like you're holding a treat in these two. Sometimes you are, sometimes you're not. Okay. And you lift your wrist like this. Sit. Good girl. Okay, so ask her for, ask her for a sit. Berkeley. Okay. When you're going to give the hand signal, don't keep doing that to okay. her. Because that teaches her that the hand signal is not just that, but the hand signal's that. Okay. Good. good. Tell her good girl. Good girl. Beautiful. I'd like you this time to use a treat, put it up, and get her to watch you. Berkeley. Berkeley is paying a lot more attention to her because she's paying a lot more attention to Berkeley. And it's positive attention, not negative attention. The more you can make your dog feel good, the more you can mark that good behavior, the more your dog's gonna come to you in every situation. It feels great having a relationship built with her. Still have a little bit of ways to go, but it's, it's definitely improving. I would like you now to go to the end of this room and call her. I'm going to make her, I'm gonna keep her in this place. 
I want you to pull. Eight. Berkeley, come here, girly. Good girly. Lovely, lovely. Okay, Berkeley, come. Here's a good girl. Yes, good girl. Awesome. Very good. All right. Again, call her. Berkeley, come here, Berkeley. Good girly, good nice. girly. Nice. Berkeley, come here. Good girl. Good girl. Could you come where I am? This is going to be the back and forth game. I then got Jack to take my place and play the game with Barbara. Berkeley was running backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. It's the first time I've seen this dog smile and actually enjoy herself. Oh my gosh, you're gonna see such a turnaround in this dog. If you keep doing that, essentially, even Dobermans, they just love play and they love play with humans too. Not the rough play, we're not gonna do rough play with her, but this is play for her. And love that now. Now, even though she's orientating her face away from you, she gives you the butt. When she gives you the butt, that's a good signal as well. I think it's great that Berkeley's finally really beginning to form a, a relationship with Barbara and Samson and Jordan because now she'll really be kind of like a part of the family. Barbara, I think that's gonna improve your confidence with her. When you see her responding and you see really what amazing dog she is, you, you, you were beginning to unleash the potential she has. I think you're gonna be able to trust it too. It's great to have Berkeley looking at me now. Um, she was uh, turning her head away from me, um, and now she's paying attention to me, so that's, that's great. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. To get the family to invest time and positive energy into these dogs is, has been a struggle. I don't know whether they can keep it up. <laughs> We're in trouble. I really hope they find it within themselves to become more responsible owners, because if they don't, the dogs aren't going to make progress, and in fact, they're going to suffer. Now, Victoria wants to help Barbara take more leadership over the dogs, starting with the door to the den. Everything that I'm gonna do is gonna be concentrated inside. Inside, really, around the house is where Barbara needs the help. So this is what we do. The whole premise of this training is that the dogs are not allowed out of the door until they're calm. Okay, up. Wait. I use the wait cue with the dogs. It's basically teaching the dog's impulse control. Wait. Wait. Good. Now it's Barbara's turn. Berkeley, come on. Beautiful. The new me is not gonna, I'm not gonna let Berkeley get away with as much and I'm gonna be firm. With the dog spending less time in the den, Victoria also wants Barbara to have control throughout the house. You need to have a very level tone of voice. You need to be extremely patient. One of your traits is you give up easily. If things become too much, you're just like, oh, I can't do it. And if we have to work on this for one hour, we're gonna do it. I'm to do this, Victoria introduces a new command. I'm gonna use a stay. And the stay is different from the wait because wait means that uh, uh, Wait means you just have to wait in one place, but I'm going to release you. Stay means you gotta stay there. Stay. Stay. It wasn't long before both dogs were just staying in one place. I was able to walk around the other part of the kitchen. And I think Barbara was really impressed by what she saw her dogs do. Zeppelin and Berkeley are perfectly behaved for Victoria, but will they do the same for Barbara? All right, so. We need to be direct, give them the cue now, too late. Okay, bring her back. Good, nice, very nice. Give the cue to begin with, cue them now. Stay. 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 Push her back with your body, body block, not with your hands, with your body. Body blocking is very That's simple. It. You don't use your hands, you just put your body in front of the dog's access. Zep on back. Back. No, that's the, the back is over there. This, okay. Barbara's really struggling with the dogs, but I really want to bring her confidence up so she knows how to communicate with both of her dogs. That's it, good. Now tell her, stay strong. Tell her now. Berkeley, stay, stay. She has to be a strong leader and she can't give up. They don't know what you want unless you communicate what you want. With your body strong, 
As soon as you tell them to go back and they go back, then say stay. Be very deliberate and very strong about it. Cue it. Stay. 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 Back. Stay. Good. Perfectly back. Good. Now walk away. Stay. It took a little time, but Berkeley finally got it, and she realized she wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't going to let her go. What does it feel like with the dogs listening to you? It feels great. So much, I think, of what's gone on in your house is because there hasn't been leadership. Now you've got a few tools now where you can take control back. Barbara made huge progress throughout this training from a very unconfident person with their dog. She's now really communicating with them well. They're cooperating with her, and I don't think that's ever happened. Since Victoria's left, I can tell that Barbara is more confident uh, when she's interacting with the dogs. Wait. Come on. And I see that she's much closer with Berkeley and really uh, bonding with her like she already had with Zep. I definitely feel like Berkeley responds to me more now. Watch me. Just calling her, talking to her, she comes over so I can pet her. Good girl. Good girl.